Hello guys, Chills20 here, welcome back to Oceania. If you missed the last couple of episodes, we have left Dundee just for a little while and we're out working in the middle of the map on a little town called Patterson. We've established that this town is going to be a university town. We have built uh, quite a lot of the infrastructure, the highway going out this way, and we've also got the layout of the town. You know, just bits and pieces, even the train line. We've got a train station sitting over here. But what we need at the moment is we need that university because I can't really call it a university town without the university. We have a couple of bits and pieces for the university. For instance, we've got this guy sitting out here, which I'm gonna, you know what, let's just get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of it because, first of all, it's too big. Yeah, I know, don't worry, it's coming back. First of all, it's too big. It doesn't um, really fit the size of the town. I think we're going to use some more custom assets instead. So I've gone on the Steam Workshop and I've grabbed some of these buildings that are made by King Leno. They are really, really nice. And I think they're going to fit this style a little bit better. Plus they're much smaller. So I think it's going to be better in terms of scale. So we're going to be placing some of them down. And I also don't want the university out here. I think I'm going to leave this area for a couple of these suburbs. Might just keep around here and then going into some farmland and then we'll have a nice big gap between Patterson and then whatever town we build out there. So instead, I think the best place for this university is going to be over here in this paddock. Reason why as well is we're going to have good access so people can get to the university pretty well through this highway. And I also think that the town obviously was established and then the university was built afterwards. So it needs to be out of town and it needs to be still fairly close so that people can actually still get to it. So first things first, we need to replace down that administration building and that way we can start placing down some of the other buildings for the campus. The road going into the campus, I would like to have an, a connection from the highway, but first I think we need to have one from Patterson. So looking at our main roads, we have obviously this one, but it goes straight to the train station, so that's not going to be a good one. I think this is probably the best, the best option. We do have the train line right there, so I'm looking at our connections to the roads over here, and yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be the best option. Hopefully that doesn't interrupt the trains coming to the station. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think we might have a couple of problems or even, ooh, you know what? I mean, maybe we even have a road going down under here. That would be pretty cool. Ooh, but would it look that realistic? And would it be that, uh, I don't know, would it be that necessary? Now this road, I think that I'm gonna keep this going straight for just a little while longer. And then it's going to start winding elsewhere, even something just kind of like this. Yeah, you know what? It's actually going to go all the way through here and then it can connect back up to the highway there. I kind of like that because it sort of shows that this was probably connected up to this road, you know, and then this highway has just been expanded, um, added in the double lanes as the town is sort of need a little bit more infrastructure so I kind of like that that winds out that way and then these ones will just continue the same grid of Patterson's uh, main road layout you know I think it'll probably just be like that and then for our university I think it's going to sit in here so this road's going to go behind the university and our university will sit somewhere in here so you know I'm kind of now married to that idea of having that road go onto here so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it even though we probably don't really need it. And I don't think it's even gonna connect up to university in the first place, but I don't know. Now I kind of just want to see that road there. There, I don't know, I just <laughs> I just wanted to do it. Um, so it's there. You know, I'm gonna keep it fairly small. I don't think we really need an avenue going in. I'm just gonna start with just a small road. I know that's gonna be uh, kind of small for a university campus, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, similar to the size of this place. I don't really want to go too large because I'm just worried of shadowing, uh, overshadowing Patterson. You know, that's sort of priority number one is to make sure that I build a big enough campus to hold a fair amount of students. But I also want to make sure that we're not making it too large because then Patterson's going to look like I don't know, tiny compared to it. Trying to think of interesting road layouts, but also trying to leave us enough room to, you know, put buildings down and, uh, 
you know, administration buildings and classrooms and dormitories. You know, I want to try and have, you know, different places for dorms. So that's our admin building. And look, it's pretty small and that's why I've chosen it. And it's also a much better looking building than some of the vanilla ones. So see all this, see how all this is a university. This is all a campus. I'm doing this on purpose because I wanted my university to be connected up. Oh, look at that. It's all a different building. All right. Let's just connect it like this. Campuses around Australia, some of them will have the main campus, but then they'll have dorms within the actual town itself. So I know the university that I went to, some people lived within the town and I want to do the same thing. So I actually want to dedicate some of these blocks. Like I think maybe out here could even have, like I'm not married to some of these houses. Let's just commit and just completely demolish them. And then obviously he's too big and that's too big, and that's that's too big as well. So <laughs> I really thought about this very well. Uh, these are too big, damn. All right, I can make that one fit. I just have to demolish that road, which is fine. I'll actually add a fence there just to give it a little bit more privacy. And maybe this whole block can be dedicated, well, not even the whole block, but this whole area here can be dedicated to this, uh, this dorm. So we'll have one there, and I might even place another one. Let's get rid of these houses. Yeah, I kind of like that. So we've got different dorms uh, situated within the town as well. But obviously they need a little bit of work. So we'll detail that up in the time lapse. And I might even jump into a time lapse just in a second. Actually, you know what? I want to see how this goes. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen. Yeah, okay. So we need to make some adjustments. Uh, I was really worried about how this was going to swing around into the stop. Oh, and I hate that too. All right, I hate all that. So what am I going to do there? That's really annoying. I will might, might try and change that in the time lapse. I knew that was going to be too close to the node. So we'll have to figure out how that's going to look. But I'm going to do that in the time lapse. I think it's going to be much easier. Oh, I'm so happy that people are using this. That That is just so fantastic. So people are actually living in Patterson, getting the train all the way into Dundee. And, you know, they're obviously coming, going to visit things and some people are students too. So yeah, that's amazing. Oh man, that makes me so happy. All right, let's jump to a time lapse. I'm going to work on this campus, place down a couple of buildings, figure out where some dorms are going to sit and then we'll jump back into another live play and uh, just see how this thing's functioning. All right, let's get into it. So first things first, what are we going to call this university? A lot of people were suggesting names like Mount Grey University or Patterson University. Uh, the university that I went to at a Bathurst and a lot of the universities, I'm going to say university a lot in this episode, I can already tell, uh, but a lot of the unis out in Australia, inland New South Wales, and um, I think even in Victoria, there's a couple of them. They're known as Charles Sturt University. There's a bunch of different campuses all around New South Wales. So we could go with calling this uni maybe something, maybe it could be a figure, maybe it could be someone. Charles Sturt was a British explorer. So we could kind of go with that sort of a theme or we could go Patterson University or Mount Grey. I don't know, I don't really care. But um, you guys let me know if you have any ideas. Remember, we are sort of adding stories and um, information to our interactive map to Oceania. If you haven't checked that out, go and check it out. It's up on my website. There's a link in the description. It's really cool. You can fly around and check out the different names of places. At the moment, Patterson is not on the map. I'll be uh, taking some pictures and upgrading, upgrading, updating the map once we uh, finish this place up. But Dundee's already in there. Even some of the mountains and oceans are there too. And you know what? I actually plan to get way more into these interactive maps and getting more people involved and even just starting it from the get-go with the new series I've just been slowly, slowly chipping away at. But yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. So what we've been up to at the moment is still just figuring out this road layout, something I always spend a lot of time working on. You know, I spend ages. I think a lot of people enjoy watching my uh, thought process with roads and, you know, layouts and stuff. I honestly put way too much thought into it and I usually just go, all right, like you know, I spend ages and ages and then at some point I just go, all right, just come on, make a decision, stop fluffing around, just put something down and just go with it. Even if you're having a second, second guess, it, I don't know. It's just one of those uh, things that I get really, really stuck on. Probably why it takes so long for me to make episodes because I do get stuck on ideas way too much. Uh, but this is the winning layout. 
Uh, I am going for a slightly more stylized university than how they look in Australia and New Zealand. And what I mean by that is usually these inland universities, they just don't really have particularly interesting road layouts. You know, they're just sort of mashed together. These buildings are just sort of randomly placed. It's nothing like too interesting to look at from above. Whereas you can make really interesting universities, I think, just by going with a bit more of a stylized approach. So a little bit more symmetry, a little bit more you know, thought put into, um, you know, space between some of these buildings. So I am providing a lot more space between some of these buildings, trying to make the university a little bit more walkable than I know my university was when I went there. You know, looking at Bathurst University, you know, a lot of 70s architecture, the road layout is just sort of like, meh, you know, nothing too inspiring. But I wanted to just create something a little bit more interesting from a bird's eye view perspective. So we are sort of doing something a bit different. And also the buildings too. The buildings are way more American than Australian universities, but we don't really have uh, not, a, not a huge amount to work with. You know, there's not a lot of custom campus buildings on the Steam Workshop. King Leto has made like a great bunch of ones and I think the building size works a lot better. There's no way I could have possibly used the vanilla assets because the buildings are just massive. They work within a large city and they're sort of stylized just in general, but I think putting them in a small town and scaling things down doesn't really work. So I have had to be a little bit creative and I've added in a couple of non-university buildings. So we've got some, uh, I think we've got an elementary school and a high school. And I do splice in a couple of extra just vanilla university buildings, but there's not, there's no huge amount I can use, unfortunately. I will also put some office blocks in and just a couple of other random buildings. But, you know, it's really just me trying to find buildings that work. But also because I've got this... I don't know, little fixation, I guess, on making sure that the anything that I build has to be somewhat related to functionality. So, you know, I don't want to just like place down completely random buildings and make everything a procedural object or, you know, just place down a bunch of random props. Like, for some reason, it's not for some reason, I know exactly why I do it, but I just really enjoy knowing that the majority of the buildings down here uh, for education, we've got parks that are working as parks and the land value is getting bumped up because it's the thing that the town needed the most. You know, it, it all works, okay? So if you're ever wondering if I'm just like placing things down randomly and nothing is working and nothing functions, trust me, it all works, it all functions. People walk around and people uh, interact with it all. And, you know, the majority of the buildings I place down have got something to do with education or uh, some kind of recreational facility and then the rest are pathways and the rest are parking lots and you know We're trying to keep it somewhat related. So it's not just com a complete unrelated bunch of buildings that I'm placing down There'll be like a couple of them <laughs> But the majority should be somewhat related to education uh, I've also added in an auditorium just a stage over there which makes a really nice uh, focal point at the edge of the campus and I've also gone and changed all the rooftops, at least all the rooftops that I can change to blue. Just another style choice. I just wanted them to all have a very similar um, rooftop. And now I'm just, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm making, I'm making a car park. Now for some reason, and you guys let me know if you do the same thing, but I've made a bunch of car parks and for some reason I just, did something different here and it just doesn't work. It's so, so stupid. It's too big. I don't know why I put roads under here. I don't know why I decided to use uh, this asset, like these parking lot assets rather than just using the parking lot network. I decided to keep this footage just so you can see that, you know, sometimes my thought process is really stupid. <laughs> it's just, a, why, I don't know why I did it. It took ages. I've not included a bunch of footage. It like looks a little dumb. I don't know. It's just it's just how it is and You know sometimes just because I have done something multiple times doesn't mean I shouldn't just continue doing the same tried and true uh, technique, but I Don't know decided to do things a little bit differently and I cannot say it paid off, um, but it's there. It's finished and Yeah, it's it's just there and it's finished 
Uh, something I haven't really spoken about is I touched on, but I did want to make sure that this university was very walkable and a lot of open space. I'm also going to add less trees than usual, you know, usually just plaster a whole bunch of trees down to hide a lot of imperfections. But this time around, when I do get to the trees, I try and make sure that the placement of them is just a little bit more strategic than I usually go. And I really just wanted to show how much green space there was, you know, lots of room for people to go and study on the lawns and, uh, you know, lots of areas for just recreation. So we build quite a lot of parks and, uh, you know, a lot of pathways too. I'm also trying to get people off the roads, you know, I don't really want people walking along the pathways on the road. So trying to make these pathways work a bit better. I was originally just using the vanilla, the vanilla pathways, but I decided to convert these to invisible ones and I end up placing just a decal instead over the top of these paths because you just have cleaner sides. There is not that ruined, uh, ruined texture that comes underneath it. I don't know, it just works a lot better. Uh, something that you do when you do something like this is it's important to still see where those pathways are and then add the decals and then convert them to invisible ones. And I think it just looks way better. And then I'm also able to go through and remove the sidewalks on the roads. There's not a huge amount of roads on the Steam Workshop that just don't have sidewalks. So you have to go in and use surface painter just to remove it but it's still not perfect i would love a couple of roads that just don't have sidewalks but that's not really something that's on the steam workshop so, so i don't know i guess it's one of those things that people don't really want actually you know what just just to completely divert and just a, a train of thought that has just popped into my mind but something that i have always wanted and there's been a couple of mods popped up on the steam workshop you know, throughout the years, but I've never really quite hit the mark and I, it's probably because it's not possible, but I would just love better fog. I would really love better fog so that when you zoomed out, the distance just looked like it was really, really far away. You know, this is what a lot of open world video games do really well. At least some of the ones do really well. It's just creating that fog to hide a lot of the distant places so that when you were to look at your city, It'd be great just to see a layer of haze or a layer of fog just to create the illusion that the city is much further than it really is. But anyway, back to universities. I have now laid down all the trees and like I said, I try to be a little bit more strategic than I usually am. You know, try not to do a huge amount of trees to cover up the green space. I wanted to keep it fairly open. There was one part of the uni that I did want there to be a fair amount of trees and that's uh, pretty much where the uni meets Patterson. So just around there is pretty wild and, you know, choosing a whole bunch of different types of trees, mostly gums and a bunch of smaller foliage. You know, I'm actually putting quite a lot of detail and a lot of thought into the tree placement. I don't know if you can see the difference, but I'm really trying to include a mass variety of trees rather than going for um, a bunch of that, you know, a bunch of very generic looking ones. I've also created one of my favorite looking recreational areas. I've got a football field and an AFL field. Sorry, I shouldn't say football, I should say rugby. And now I'm starting to work on an area of the campus where we, we've got the students staying. So this is the uh, student accommodation. We have dormitories, you know, on the Steam Workshop, we've got dormitories uh, as part of the assets, but they're massive, they're these massive buildings, but a lot of the student residents on campus within Australia, at least, you know, it's, it's a variety of different types of places. You've got smaller houses, you've got share houses, you've got flats and they're all being built at different times, different periods uh, within the history of the uni. So I wanted to show that the ones closer to the campus are just a little bit more dated. So you can see these guys, I mean, obviously these are growables, but I wanted to show that the share houses, they're a little older. I reckon they're probably built around the 60s, 70s. They're, you know, definitely on the older side of things. Um, but these are individual houses and they are obviously share houses. So you know, they all look exactly the same. They were built by the uni. And then I wanted to show a bit further away from the campus, something that was probably built, I don't know, maybe like 10, 15 years ago, maybe even less, some more modern types of accommodation. And yeah, we're just using some of these eco houses, which work really well, nice and small, 
very, uh, you know, these are very Australian. I feel like they've got the tin rooftops and everything. And yeah, I mean, not a huge amount of detail on these guys. I really just wanted to build them up and probably get to them in the live play, which is, I mean, it's, it's now, it's now. We're gonna <laughs> jump into the live play and look, we'll just move some people in, press play and see how the university operates. It is now that time to finally hit unpause and see just how well our campus is going to thrive. I say thrive, I don't even know if it's even gonna hit thrive. Uh, I do hope it's gonna do pretty well though. Uh, we will take a little while until people start to move in. Students start to move into their dorms, I should say, uh, and which is basically our first problem. We uh, don't technically have any dorms on our campus. So I did make some student accommodation out here, but these are only, I mean, these are just growables. So they're just behaving just as residents behave within city skylines. So not in fact dorms. The only dorms we have are basically inside Patterson. And that's about it. These are holding, what, a hundred students? I don't know. We might just have to see how it goes because at the moment, that's all we have. So they're going to have to make their journey all the way into the campus. They're not even staying on campus. So I don't know. That's probably not going to work that well. The thing is, is that the dorms in this game are just way too large. These are the dorms and I don't really want to place any of them down. In fact, the only one I can place down is this one. Well, technically I can place that one down. And then the King Letter ones, which is the ones that I was using before within Patterson, they're they're great, but I just don't know where else I can place them within our campus. So I could potentially place them around here, but I don't know, I'm sort of not really wanting to do that. So I'm just going to leave it and we'll just see what happens. In the meantime, let's just have a little fly around. I'll give you a bit more of a tour of the campus and I will just investigate, see if everything's working the way it should. Uh, hopefully classes are beginning and people are starting to move in. What? What? Maybe we can change the mascot. That can be our first job. Let's see, the Buccaneers definitely doesn't suit a country town. I wonder if we can change it to alligators, not really. Uh, Broncos, no. Eagles, maybe. Spartans, definitely not. All right, we're just going to be the Eagles. I mean, none of these are really very Australian. So the thing that I would really like to see is people using our footpaths. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Yeah, you, people using our footpaths, I really don't want to see people walking along here. Uh, the thing that I love about this game is that people will prefer to use the footpaths rather than using the sidewalks. So as soon as you place down a footpath next to a sidewalk, they will use that instead, which is excellent. Uh, something that I'm realizing now is that I was hoping that these were dorms, but they're not. This is in fact just a, yeah, that's pretty much just a police station. But you know, that's fine. Patterson did need a police station, so I guess that's going to satisfy those needs. And then um, looking at the different uh, buildings that we have here, we've got the Academic Library, we have the College of Engineering. Back here we have a high school, which is totally fine as long as it's to do with education, I'm totally happy with. Uh, we have the Maths Club, and we also have the Netball Centre, which we'll have to rename that when we name our university. We've got the Futsal Club, which I don't even know what Futsal is, so we've got that there. Uh, we've got another uh, education facility, but this is an elementary school, a primary school. Um, just ignore this. I've just put that there as a crematorium, but I don't know. I felt like we needed some sort of industrial zone. Uh, we've got another elementary school. And then if we go into Patterson, we have just a couple of parts of the university in the town as well. And like I mentioned in the time lapse, yeah, I mean, the buildings themselves aren't massively Australian. They do have a little bit more of a uh, American sort of style to them. But I am quite happy with the way that the university turned out. It does seem to be like somewhat of a Australian type of university layout, uh, minus all the random buildings and the 70s architecture. We do have a little bit of 70s architecture, just you know, nestled into some areas. But besides that, I think that it's still a fairly nice, uh, fairly nice uni. Oh, okay. That's something we need to work on. So I forgot about that. 
We need to work on a better connection to the uni from the highway. I mean, over this way, that's fine. That works pretty well. But I don't really think this is going to work out very well, particularly when we start getting some uh, some matches happening and people start flocking to the uni. We're going to need to have something a little bit better. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, I'm going to put it on pause because we do actually have a uh, match happening right now. And look, I'm not going to do anything too crazy. It's just a matter of connecting a road like that. And I might even just pull that out just a little bit so that it's not so, uh, yeah, the nodes don't freak out completely. And then speaking of nodes, we could make some changes with node controller. So I'm going to drag out some of these. Actually, all right, that should make it a lot easier for cars to make that turn. And then I think that we need to give them a little bit more space for this one. So what is that? That's an orange. So maybe if I stretch the orange. Whoop, wrong one. That's not an orange. <laughs> They're all, okay, I was looking at the outer ring. We need the inner ring, which is like a kind of yellow. I'll do a couple of lines just for some good measure. But, you know, once again, I don't really do that much in terms of lines. Just because I'm, I'm kind of lazy in that regards. But just maybe that. And then I guess if they're turning left on there, then that. And then the other one's not so much. But that's, yeah, that's all right. But I guess this is still pretty far away from Dundee. Like, Dundee's ages away, so maybe people are still on their way. And the people who have just arrived are probably just residents of Patterson. People leveling up. So this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. I think buildings are starting to level up because we do have a university within the town now. Uh, unfortunately, these guys are still pretty miserable, but look at that. Actually, they're not that miserable. All these guys were having the worst time ever, but now it's looking not so bad. Yeah, that's definitely improved things. That's amazing. That's improved things a lot. We've got a train arriving Patterson, and I do think that quite a lot of people are going to come off this because, yeah, we do have the event. We've only just opened the university, which means that quite a lot of people are probably going to be moving in. Uh, a lot of students. I can already see quite a lot of people waiting at the station. Look at that. I still need to expand that out. Yep, that's on the list of things to do. There's so many people using this station that I really think that I need to upgrade maybe uh maybe the line we might need to add an extra train because at the moment this is taking a fair amount of time just to get uh just to get to patterson in the first place yeah look all these people pretty much all these people are going that person was going to the pub but pretty much all these people are going to university so oh man this is this is so exciting so yeah people are heading over to the uni we also have our playing fields, which I don't think are technically parks at the moment. Did I make them into parks? No, I didn't. Let's make them into parks. That's also going to improve the land value. There. Okay. That's a park now. Now, I've only just hidden in a couple of these uh, these boxes because I don't really want to change it too much. Like, obviously, the two playing fields are going to be attracting people. So, I do want that to be the main draw card. I don't really want to go and place any of the, you know vanilla pieces down here just because it's already kind of doing its thing so that should draw people there and should also bump up that land value just a bit more yeah so um yeah i mean people are starting to move in people are starting to go to the uni and the land value is starting to increase as well which is something we desperately needed and as soon as we start developing up over here that's gonna just fit in so much better because at the moment it does look a bit unusual just amongst this area because it is so uh, underdeveloped. Patterson's developed but not around here but you know I think it really works you know nestled within the mountain right next to this bushland right next to this farmland I think that if you were to build a university just outside of Patterson this would be the place to build it but you know what I'm gonna leave it at that and we're just gonna see how we go in the next episode I'm gonna just Maybe just smash through a couple of years and we'll just see just how well our campus is going. And like I mentioned in the time lapse, please let me know if you have any name suggestions and, you know, any ideas of what the name of this university is. I would uh, love to hear your suggestions because at the moment I don't really know what it's going to be, but I'm sure you guys are definitely going to come up with uh, much better ideas than I am. 
But guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. It is always very much appreciated. I want to give a special shout out to some of the wonderful people over on Patreon supporting the channel. 12th Dutchman, Thompson Applin, Ryan, Riley Callahan, Kenan Koig, Anthony Smith, Samuel Seltzer, Hendo, Marcus Allen, Dan W, Jim Royster, and Michael Danger. Guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!